<laughs> Welcome. I'm Linda Rogenkamp, and I've been here since oh about 2017, helping in the museum, and a retired teacher and educator. But uh, what I want to talk to you about today is our log cabin uh, that uh, graced our property quite a while. Anyway, I'll tell you a little bit. Of, I really want to kind of go in the history of it more so than even the furniture in a sense. Um, basically, uh, the settlement for this area was opened in 1854, and this house itself, uh, they gave a patent to Lida May. It was October 22nd in 1880, and we have one of her chairs right here that she actually wove uh, in this uh, log cabin sometime. We don't know when. Uh, this property or this ha cabin itself was located uh, about two or three miles east of uh, on Highway 16. Uh, it is where Tom and Ruth Caston now live, if you know them. Uh, kind of in the wooded area. And uh, part of the thing is that this is here because Rick May, uh, he actually uh, kind of would go across field and this old house was there and they would play in it. Well, they finally realized there was, the house was added on to and this cabin was on the inside. Okay, so in 1975, our historical society grew and that was the first thing they decided to get something that was historical in the area and they brought it actually downtown and it was on Main Street for quite a while. Um, there, I don't know, I think that, yeah, on Main Street, if, if you know. Where, I, I, where I don't my know. shop is. Where your shop is, mm -hmm. okay. Because I thought it was south of the hotel area, yes. but I, I, I'm like, I don't know if it'll fit there unless it goes this way, you know? <laughs> so it was where Bob's uh, uh, oh, shop okay. is right now. Um, some things about this uh, cabin is that we have had to try to preserve it, but the size of it is correct because we got the original logs here. And you can see them right all the way down. This is not the original chinking. They were trying to preserve it way back when they moved it up here, and they actually put some kind of cement. Well, in 2017, we realized there were logs that were starting to rot on the bottom because of the water coming down. So we had some professionals preserve it on the outside and put a type of chinking that's more modern. So the chinking that you see, you can kind of put your fingers into it and it's a little more mobile and it's a little more resistant. Uh, you know, I don't want anybody poking through it, but, and then you can see where we had to replace some logs. But you can tell the difference between the logs. These are probably oak, uh, and I always do this with the kids when they come around. If, the, if you want to have this, there's an oak chunk as opposed to a pine chunk. And you can tell the difference between the two. And the chinking here that they did, they put plastic on the inside of it and then put that kind of a rubbery kind of chinking in. Um, so that cost us quite a bit to get that redone, but we feel like we preserved it. No, the roof wasn't this, uh, but that's what we had to do. There was no electricity in this. Uh, we do have a few items around that help us uh, kind of make the ambiance correct. Um, this is a an old stove. Of course, she may have used it. I, we don't know. I, we're trying to find some history on it. But it's a coal stove, and if you've ever seen one like that, we've got the old cast iron uh, types of things that you can put on it. You can uh, take your lid off, and you put the coal in here. You have never seen one of those. And actually, I grew up with one back in the early 60s. And then this here, you would pull out, get the, the ashes, and you'd have your old coal bucket to get the ashes or get the coal in and out of the house. So that's kind of a unique old piece of equipment. Um, going back to Lida May, if you want to find out more information on her, we got a few things here. Um, it was interesting. He put the deed into her name, but it was actual Celestial May, who uh, was her husband, 
but I think I haven't got enough history to find out yet if he had some other property somewhere and so if you put two names you can get more land you know different and then because really a woman back those days didn't own land and so I, I think that's what the case was because it was deeded to her I, I don't understand why otherwise uh, I'm not sure um, Lida may uh, ended up uh, moving into Havensville at some time. I haven't found that one out either. But Salatio, who was her husband, who lived in this cabin out on the farm, um, died after the war. He was in the Civil War. Um, I think he died about like 10 years later. I have a little information. Um, oh, let's see, where is that? Uh, I'm not good with, with years, so I always have to look up. <laughs> I don't want to tell anybody something wrong. Um, he actually died in 1876. And they had two children. One of them died like five or six years old, very young. And then the other one uh, lived longer and she lived with him when she moved to Havensville. And they were maids. Uh, she married a Woodward. I haven't figured out how that worked because she went, ended up with her son and she was called Grandma Woodard over in Havensville. She was noted for that. Um, so anyway, they came in from, uh, uh, George May came in from Virginia and Pennsylvania. Um, and I, yeah. And then they had uh, 13 children. <laughs> so you can understand why Salatial, I, I don't have all the information, you know. There's some that died and some didn't. Um, but anyway, four of those, no, five of those children actually were in Company 1, 11th Kansas Cavalry. So that's kind of interesting, I thought, when I found that out. Um, as you look around for the ambiance, um, I think you can tell this here was where they would put water in and you can heat it up or, or to, you know, for bathing, whatever. We have an old time. Uh, washing machine over here in the back and you can read more about it. We got some old books and uh, stuff. What's kind of unique is this. That was uh, built inside of this cabin and so when they moved it up here it just came with it and when we had to redo the floor because it was rotting it was a real hassle to try to get it out of here <laughs> but, it, but it was built inside of this and it, it was something else to get it out of here without taking it apart. Um, the, there's kind of a story about it there that you can read on. Here's an original picture of the cabin after they uncovered it and a little more detail about Lida. There's some old square nails if you haven't seen them. We have some, uh, an old wicker uh, basket, uh, I'm sorry, carriage. And if you go around we have some oh, spinning, uh, spinning wheels. wheels. You can look at our old uh, back here in the corner it really we ha I really would love to see this thing work but right now we don't it's the crank for your old uh, photographs where you would take a cylinder like this back in the oh I think it uh, doesn't say a year I don't know a year I need to find that out but this is actually the record and you know how they had flat ones later on most of us grew up with those but this is the one that would you go in here and then you would turn the crank get that uh, generator to make that turn and then you hear the sound coming out. Um, I have to add something Linda. Okay. It kind of goes with my spooky tour over there. Oh right. But we have a finger chopper. Oh over dude, here. I better you tell, tell them about them that. About that. <laughs> yes, all the women in the older days would put their flour and stuff into one of these and we even got it named flower man but be careful because it would come in and you would slam your door and you could get your finger and it would really hurt. <laughs> we have some old time type of dishes you can read about a little more. Um, I think, um, oh, I can't think of her name, that she even drew it up for us on her calendar. Um, uh, anyway, not great with names. So Let's see, what else? I'm, I'm trying to go fast because I don't want to get... Oh, when we redid this, it was close to a little over 20000 to get it refurnished. 
we've got it covered on the outside so it's supposed to be resistant to the insects um, and then we got the new chinking they they lifted it up so that they could get those logs into there and then a few years later we really wanted to preserve the floor but finally gave in because you wouldn't have even been able to walk in here and uh, a wood floor is usually what what they had um, it was a wood floor before we took it out uh, but it was rotting too bad uh, the doorway had been inserted I think that probably was a doorway into another room because the house was built around it and then we just put the doors on it so that we had it and and of course kids I don't know if you know they, they, they didn't have guttering and all that, but we have to do that to reserve it in the electrical. There is an old lantern, uh, which she set it out. There used to be right in the middle of the table, but anyway, uh, we had a kerosene lantern. Uh, oh, there on top of the... There, it's on top of the... Okay, well, we'll, we'll, we'll move it back. We, we, we move things around to the dust and clean sometimes, then we forget. It's probably the ghost. Oh, oh, oh yes. Spooky ghost. Mm -hmm. um, on uh, the floor, we also had um, a stonemason and his family came in and put the stone on the outside when you go buy it so that we could put this down without it rotting. We have water that comes off of those buildings, but now we've got it so that it will go out to the side, and so hopefully this will be preserved. But we got some natural rocks all around it, and that came from our quarry right across the road, you know, when they uh, were uh, demolishing that building. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm. Um, how this is the first family? time I've ever done it for adults. I always do it for little kids. How big of a family? You're like me. I was in education. You're, you're real good around kids and adults. How big of a family at one point was the biggest family that was? Well, I actually can't prove it, but I think there were eight people that lived in here. Wow. And and you think about it. I think they used this as a divider, probably about the way we yeah. set it up. And we did. We used to have an old. Uh, um, Tick, they used to call them beds, you know, made with the cotton feathers and all that. But we, um, it just wasn't in good repair, so we kind of put two sitting rooms together, even though it, more than likely this was a bedroom. Um, so. You think it would have yeah. had a loft in the original? That's possible, oh, yeah. especially when they had a um, um, built around it, very much so. And, and even here, I about wonder, we're gonna have to search that out a little more. Uh, I don't know any information. So it, it is very interesting. We think this was actually built in the 1880s. So it's well over, getting close, 150 years. So that's kind of neat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and we can kind of only imagine, you know, that the, the cheeking at that time, uh, they would use uh, straw, and some clay material and just stuff it between the ro uh, logs. We didn't feel real bad about replacing the logs because that is the natural thing of a, of a log cabin that you have to do that if one does start to rot. So, but we made sure to preserve the size and we've got some natural logs that were actually out there yet and then the ones that did rot we had to replace. Yeah. Any other questions? I'm not sure if I can answer them all, but uh, we're, we're enjoying. I, I really, last night, I always go back and try to re-look up 